Defense and National Security Editor of Vice News, Ryan Faith, spoke with me about the current state of the international space race. And I asked him first, well, where is the U.S. today in terms of space travel? For the U.S. human space flight program, it's basically in a rebuilding phase because the, uh, the systems for human space flight are enormously expensive. So it's kind of like selling a house is that before you need to move, before you can move into a new house, you need to sell your old one. So now NASA's done with its old human space flight program and is now getting all spooled up on this new one. Uh, for a lot of our viewers, we've forgotten probably the reason why the International Space Station is there in the first place. Uh, I mean, it's a joint global effort, but a lot's changed from its initial conception, right? Absolutely. There's basically sort of two main sets of reasons that uh, the International Space Station is an international effort. One is because it's very uh, helpful to have a lot of countries working together on such a gigantic engineering project. It's an, I mean, an absolutely enormous space station. And the second was basically to sort of take some of the Cold War competition uh, and turn that into sort of a more beneficial cooperate, I mean, mode of cooperation that brought the uh, U.S. and Russian programs together working in sync. If, if I'm a space fan and I'm watching this and I'm thinking to myself, what is the real purpose of all this? Aside from the fact that it's absolutely fascinating, but is, is there a uh, sort of strategic purpose? Well, the strategic purpose is actually sort of a little bit complex and a little bit nuanced. Uh, one of the things that you get out of a space program is a huge boost in interest in uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, which pays its own set of economic dividends. Uh, beyond that, there's the sort of immediate economic spin-offs, uh, developments in microprocessors, uh, hardened microprocessors, and biology. And then the third is really sort of the longest term, uh, but perhaps the most exciting, is that the rest of the solar system is enormously large. We just don't know what's out there, what might be incredibly valuable, uh, what might be very scientifically useful. And those could be very long-term payoffs, uh, but perhaps very high long-term payoffs. Is it strange that other countries have sort of done more on the space? I mean, I'm pointing specifically to China. I mean, they, they seem to be going gangbusters in terms of putting funding and scientists at work, while at the same time, um, the U.S. is really in sort of a, a transition mode, as, as you said. What's the next decade look like? Well, the next, the next decade is actually has a, a, a lot of potential promise. Uh, the Chinese program is actually a great example of a smaller in terms of budget, but very disciplined and very focused program. Uh, the U.S. approach tends to be a little bit more scattershot, uh, we, perhaps involving more robotic probes to the outer planets, uh, and is just a little less tightly focused. Uh, but I think the, as you'd mentioned earlier, that what happens after the space station is sort of a big question. Uh, so basically after 2020, everybody's plans get a little bit more vague um, and a little bit more uh, possibility for different forms of cooperation or different forms of competition. So it's uh, the next decade promises to be pretty exciting. I mean, there has been, uh, and not just governments pouring money into these um, experiments, so to speak. Uh, we've seen private uh, companies, uh, Elon Musk, for example, of uh, Tesla, and uh, Richard Branson with the uh, Virgin Galactic. I mean, they've all have all these great ideas of putting up hotels uh, into space, essentially, or sending tourists up there. Uh, do you think ultimately this is this is a good thing for the space program, or does it end up being a, a distraction to the uh, the science and technology innovation uh, uh, capsule that we've always uh, thought of space as? No, it's actually a, a great question because there's a lot that we don't know about space and you know, we don't know uh, necessarily the best way, not just from an engineering point of view, but from a management or a organizational point of view, how to do things. So we have the traditionally government-funded programs like NASA. Uh, we have things like SpaceX with Elon Musk, as you mentioned, which are effectively a form of a, a novel form of public-private partnership, all the way to Richard Branson, which is essentially a purely commercial endeavor. So those are sort of ways of testing out uh, the, the funding and budgeting mechanisms that might work very well in the long run. I mean, is it, I guess ultimately, do you need government support to have any of these programs work? I mean, a private commercial entity it, it has to be extremely difficult. Oh, it's absolutely, absolutely expensive and very difficult, but it's not necessarily certain that governments, the uh, best way. It's certainly not the only way, and this is why things uh, like SpaceX are actually kind of a, a big development, because it's opening up and sort of looking at a broader range of options for how we pay for these very long lead time, very technology-intensive programs.